everyone, it's Professor Horlocker, and in this particular video, we're going to talk about the differences between the 5-7 and its inversions and the 7-7 seven, seven and its inversions. And to start off, I have a piano piece here by the 19th century composer Robert Schumann. Uh, you can forget this. This is an artifact of the issue of the uh, one I'm using. The piece is called Carnival, and that's what you would think it means. It's these are little character piano pieces, things that you might hear or see at a carnival, and it's from the piece Carnival has the number Opus Nine. So I want you to listen to this and listen to the particular, particularly this first time around, the quality of the chords that are in the left hand part. Here we go. We'll go just that far. Let me highlight this lower part for you. Really interested in that sound right there. Okay. Uh, before this, We've seen lots of bass lines that go four, three, two, one. But we've mostly seen them using the five seven chord, four, three, two, one, in which case five the four would be a five four two, the three would be a one six, the two would be a five four three. And of course, the one would be a one chord. And what we have here in the blue color is slightly different. You might notice here that this chord does not have a scale degree five in it. There is no G in it. There is, however, a B natural, a D, an F, and an A flat. And the same thing for this chord right here. It's got a D in the bass, but instead of being with a scale degree 5 in it, it has a scale degree 6 in it. And that's what makes it a 7 chord rather than a 5 chord. Okay, let's advance to the next slide. Here I have a list where we can uh, keep track of the differences between the 5, 7, and the 7, 7. So I'll continue to do the 5 chord using red. And we know the scale degrees of the 5 chord. 5, 7, 2, and 4. The scale degrees of the 7, 7 have three things in common. Three scale degrees in common, 7, 2, and 4. But instead of that 5, there is a scale degree 6. So the difference comes right here. Okay. Uh, the 7-7 seven, seven is most often used in minor keys. And that means that its quality is usually fully diminished. And the reason for that is because that lowered scale degree 6 really drags down to 5, and it gives it a much uh, kind of juicier flavor. Okay, so what scale degree, or excuse me, what is the 7th, the TH version, that needs to resolve in these two chords? In 5-7, we know that 4 goes down to 3. It's going to be a little bit of a different situation in the 7 chord. The 7th is that usually lowered scale degree 6, it goes down to five. Okay, and so there's different things to keep track of. Both of these both have a leading tone in it, and the same rules apply for leading tones as we've been using all along. If the chords are so similar, what makes them sound a little bit different? The seven seven, fully diminished seven, and I've used red here, sorry, I should have used blue, has a much more dissonant quality. Now, why might that be? 
We know that 5-7 sounds dissonant because it has one tritone in it. And that is the tritone that will occur between scales degrees 7 and 4. If we look at the content of 7-7, we see that not only does it have the 7 to 4 tritone, but it also has the 2 to 6 tritone in it. And so those two dissonances, this one and this one, give the chord a much more dissonant quality. So I'm going to substitute, I'm going to go back to 5, there's the 5-7 chord. And here's the five, uh, the seven seven chord. Now, a lot of them use very very similar. Both both of these chords use very very similar bass lines, so we can still write with both of these chords one seven one, three four three, uh, two three two one for example, and four three two one. All of these are still possible using the 7-7. Seven, seven. One thing we can have in the bass line, so these are both, both chords use these bass lines right here. One thing that's kind of special about the 7 is it can go lowered 6 down to 5, but that's pretty rare. Uh, that, we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, let's advance to the next slide. In this slide, I've written out the 5-7 chord in all its inversions. Here's the 7, the 6-5, the 4-3, and the 4-2, as well as the 7-7 seven, seven in all of its inversions. So here is the 7, the 6-5, the 4-3, and the 4-2. And you can see that the bass notes are shared between 565 five and 7, fully diminished 7, between 543 and 765, and between 542 and 743. And the functions of these chords are nearly identical. So a 565 chord, because it has a leading tone in the bass, resolves up to 1. And I'll put the seventh of the chord in the bass, or in the soprano, to make it very active, and add the inner parts. The 7-7 seven, seven also has the leading tone in the bass, and so it too is going to resolve to a 1-6 chord. Only instead of that scale degree 5, we're going to have a scale degree lowered 6 in the 7-7 seven, seven chord, and as the seventh, this chord is going to resolve down to G. And the rest of the voice leading remains the same. That 7-7 seven, seven chord resolves to a 1-6 chord. Or excuse me, a 1-5-3 chord. Uh, the same thing here, a 7-6-5 goes between a 1 and a 1-6. And a 7-4-3 tends to go down to a 1-6 chord right here, just like a 5-4-2 resolves to a 1-6. This last chord here, the 7 fully diminished 4-2, is a pretty rare chord. Its seventh resolves down to G, and so it goes to a 5 chord whose function is very much the same, whereas the other ones, the 7-7, seven, seven, the 7-6-5, seven, and the 7-4-3, behave very much like connector chords between 1 and 1, 6. Let's go back to the piece that we were looking at and see how it is that Schumann takes advantage of the 7 chord in this piece, rather than the 5, at least until the very end. Okay, and the difference is going to be using A flat as opposed to G natural. Look at how that A natural, that A flat, gets emphasized. The C is a non chord tone. We get that much more dissonant sound, and a seven four three resolves with a non chord tone D to a one six. And there's the seven fully diminished six five. 
So it's that overt usage of all of those A flats that make this piece sound that, that way. Now I want you to pay attention. This is the climax, the very end of this phrase, which reaches a half cadence right here, kind of repeated. Uh, that harmony is repeated a second time. And I see that at the half cadence, there's a G natural in root position. So it looks like after all of these connecting 7-7 seven, seven chords, when Schumann decides to cadence, he reaches the, the 5, and then he even intensifies that 5 by adding a member of the 7 chord, that A-flat, in there. So we get the best of both words, worlds. Hope you've enjoyed this lesson on 5-7 seven and 7-7, seven, seven, and see you in class.